Hello fellow LEGO friends, and welcome to another thrilling video. As we near the end of the first quarter of 2024, I thought it would be an ideal opportunity to review some of the best and worst LEGO sets released during this time. Join me as we navigate through a plethora of these sets, offering insights to help you decide whether they're worth building or skipping. And don't forget to show your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing if you haven't already. Starting with Dune Atreides, Royal Ornithopter, this set, measuring an impressive 80 centimeters or 31 inches from tip to tip, immediately captures attention. However, its design feels overly technical, with an abundance of exposed technic elements and noticeable red and blue pins and axles, particularly around the blade system. The Ornithopter boasts various features, including retractable landing gear, its long blades open and close smoothly, exhibiting impressive functionality and design. When opened, they can also flap, enhancing interaction with the set. The cockpit features exclusive smoke black or transparent black pieces, opening on both sides to reveal a modest interior with a control panel and joysticks. This set also includes eight minifigures, featuring the most significant and iconic characters from Dune Part 1. For me, this set is definitely a build. Moving to the medieval town square, where each building showcases unique aesthetics, adding to the overall charm of the set. Combining two sets of buildings, one set features three interconnected buildings with modular style constructions, allowing them to open independently. Highlights include a tapestry house with a garden, a customizable woodworking shop, and a shearsman's abode with a cheese shop. The town square also features a tree adorned with medieval-style advertisements and a pond. Additionally, there's a town inn with a dining area, chef's kitchen and tax collector's bedroom, along with a building that integrates with the Lion Knight's castle theme, featuring vibrant red and black hues and a watchtower. Inside, there's an artist's studio on the ground floor and a cosy bedroom on the first floor. At the cheese stall, villagers can sample various cheeses crafted by talented cheesemakers. Meanwhile, the tapestry weaver works on commissioned pieces, and a carriage is included for the farmhouse. The set includes eight minifigures, each contributing to the vibrant community of the town square, but more minifigures would enhance the set further. This set is a build for fans of medieval-themed Lego looking for a satisfying build experience. Introducing the first LEGO Ideas set of the year, the LEGO Polaroid camera, also known as the Polaroid 1000, featuring customization options with stickers. Despite the studded back detracting from its sleekness, it's a design choice dictated by LEGO part limitations. While noticeable gaps exist at the angled section's junctions, they complement the camera's smooth side. The front's angled white section, adorned with the iconic rainbow of colors, is well executed, leading to the Polaroid LAN camera sticker. The lens, crafted from just three pieces, and the printed 2x2 two two tile shutter button are good. The functional viewfinder window adds authenticity. A standout feature is the ability to take pictures with the LEGO camera, mimicking real operation by loading a photo piece through the film door and closing it, thanks to a simple yet satisfying mechanism operated by LEGO rubber bands. Additionally, the set includes a model film pack and a box containing three Polaroid photos, enhancing the nostalgic experience. Personally, I'd opt for purchasing a real Polaroid camera instead, which can often be found at a similar or even lower price point. So, this LEGO set is a pass for me. Continuing with the LEGO Ideas theme, we have the LEGO Family Tree. It boasts a striking black trunk with roots spreading in all directions and four birdhouses, though the blue technique pin in most of them is somewhat distracting. The foliage, adorned with red and dark red leaf elements and flowers in a new orange color, is impressive. The top features birds, lost toys, and a butterfly print adding to the charm. The set includes small details like a picnic scene with a book, pumpkins, flowers, and mushrooms. The lower level houses a storage space for extras and customizable items for Lego minifigures, as suggested in the building instructions. Additionally, there are slots for changing the tree's appearance with different colored flowers. 
The main purpose of the set is to display photos using 16 assemblies made with ring elements and a photo holder element, all recolored in orange. However, the size limitations for photos may pose a challenge and the placement of photo holders around the tree may result in some being out of sight. The color scheme, particularly the teal base, may feel overwhelming to some, but displaying the tree on its own could help balance it visually. Overall, I'm uncertain about this. While I appreciate the colors, it feels too cluttered, and I can't envision myself using it as a photo stand. Therefore, it's a pass for me. The latest LEGO Ideas set is the red telephone box is a tribute to the iconic K2 phone booth found in London. Its sleek exterior incorporates red grills and inset windows, while the sides feature windows arranged in a 3x5 grid. Inside, there are two build styles for the interior, along with a shilling for a call and a functional light on top. A hidden light brick provides a cosy glow when pressed. The base features cobblestone streets, flower and hanging planters, and orange accents. Technic pins secure stability, while a fence post and street sign add character, referencing the city of Brixton. I'm not particularly fond of this year's LEGO Ideas sets. I'd also pass on this one. Steering away from LEGO Ideas sets, we shift our focus to the LEGO Technic set, the Mercedes-AMG F1 W14E Performance. This set faithfully recreates the 2023 Formula One car driven by Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. It boasts several functionalities, including suspension at both the front and rear, suitable for a Formula One vehicle. Moreover, it features a steering mechanism and a functional steering wheel within the cockpit, complete with stickers, a common characteristic of this set. Adding to its appeal is a working WI6 engine positioned at the car's rear allowing enthusiasts to witness the engine's pistons in motion, a familiar sight for many Technic sets aficionados. Notably, the set introduces new slick wheels, enhancing its authenticity. I believe this would be a perfect addition for any formula or car enthusiast. So, it's a build for me. Entering Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs Cottage, you'll find a charming scene with trees, wild mushrooms and animals. The house boasts a stone-carved chimney, timber cladding, and printed owl details. Inside, the ground floor features a large table, cosy fireplace, and Grumpy's organ. The kitchen area, though not easily accessible, includes a sink and table with well-designed shelves. Above the dining area are jewels stacked in containers. The bedroom lacks stairs but has seven distinct beds, each with its owner's name sticker. The set also includes Snow White's well-adorned with flowers and vines. On the other side, you'll find Snow White's glass coffin, symbolizing the scene where she awaits true love's kiss to awaken her. In terms of minifigures, the set includes Snow White, Prince Florian, the Evil Queen in disguise, and the Seven Dwarfs. In my opinion, like many other Disney sets, this one seems to be significantly overpriced, for the same amount of money, I'd likely choose the medieval town square instead. So, apologies to Snow White, but it's a pass for me. Moving on to the Lego Star Wars realm, we encounter the Millennium Falcon set, which features a couple of delightful Easter eggs. One notable example includes R2-D2 and Chewbacca engaged in a game of hollow chess, adding an extra layer of charm to the set. The included display stand elegantly showcases the ship, offering the option to display the 25th anniversary brick or achieve a cleaner look with a grill piece. Unlike typical vertical stands, this stand is angled, lending the Falcon a dynamic tilt as if it were in flight. The Falcon's top turret is adjustable vertically and printed tiles replace stickers, elevating its aesthetics. Despite the lack of accuracy on the bottom due to the absence of the turret and landing gear, the Falcon maintains a sleek appearance, especially when mounted on the display stand. Out of the three current options for the Millennium Falcon in varying sizes, I'd lean towards the medium size. Therefore, this particular set is a pass for me. Introducing the next LEGO Star Wars set, R2-D2. This set includes two minifigures, one of which is an exclusive 25th anniversary figure, Darth Malak. 
Standing at 23 centimeters high, the model is notably smaller than its predecessor, but comes at a significantly more affordable price. While it may not achieve complete accuracy, it unmistakably captures the essence of R2-D2's design, boasting a sleek appearance without compromising LEGO's distinctive style. This small R2-D2 is a build for me. When it comes to LEGO Harry Potter products, one standout is the talking sorting hat. What makes this model unique is its interactive feature. It can actually speak. There are two methods to activate the hat, by touching the tip or using a knob underneath it. The weathered appearance of the sorting hat is beautifully captured, further enhanced by stitched fabric stickers and printed quarter round tiles featuring additional stitching. The clever utilization of various Lego elements creates a rugged effect, particularly noticeable from the front. Additionally, the base of the hat is adorned with printed tiles representing all four houses Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw. The set also includes a Harry Potter minifigure alongside the minifigure version of the sorting hat. In general, it's an intriguing set, distinct from other Harry Potter sets. However, my main issue is its size. When placed on a head, it appears quite small. Therefore, I'll have to pass on this one. Now, onto the final two sets, both part of the Chinese New Year collection. Let's begin with the auspicious dragon. Notable for its intricate design, vibrant colors, and printed Nexo night shields. While some areas, like the feet, could be improved for better concealment of connectors, the overall construction is impressive. The dragon's articulation allows for subtle posing, but the body remains fixed. Perched on a rock formation, the dragon is surrounded by a blue water motif hinting at the sky. The rock's construction employs advanced techniques resembling those found in other complex Lego sets. Bright orange assemblies add depth, symbolizing a sunrise. The inscription translates to, Auspicious Dragon Brings Good Luck. Overall, this is undoubtedly one of the most visually stunning sets ever crafted. Its superior appearance makes it a definite must-build for me. Now turning to the final set, the family reunion celebration. This one is yet another visually stunning creation, featuring a captivating mix of green and tan tones highlighted by accents of gold and red. The external design evokes the charm of a traditional Yamcha establishment exuding a delightful appeal. With intricate detailing, it stands out as one of the most intricately designed Chinese New Year sets featuring a building. Externally, the set showcases authentic details that provide depth, offering ample space for imaginative play. Crafted in a modular style, it allows for easy separation of floors and roof. The ground floor features a welcoming lobby, a waiting area, and a compact kitchen. A brick-built staircase leads to the upper floor, revealing a spacious dining area adorned with intricate table details. Additionally, this floor includes a restroom, while the roof boasts a charming dining table for two, adorned with lanterns featuring a dragon print to commemorate the Year of the Dragon. Furthermore, the set includes a dim sum cart and a meticulously crafted street food snack stand, along with an impressive lineup of 13 minifigures. This one is also a build for me. Out of all the sets showcased today, I must admit that the Chinese New Year themed sets are my absolute favorites. While the Year of the Dragon may not come every year, the restaurant can easily fit into any Lego city, and the auspicious dragon looks stunning on its own, whether displayed on a shelf or integrated into a Lego city. Feel free to let me know in the comments if any of my picks align with yours. And if you were on the fence about purchasing any of the sets and I helped you make a decision, don't forget to use the provided affiliate links. Additionally, I've included the full review links for many of the sets featured today. Thank you for watching until the end, and until next time, happy building.